Hi, in this virtual tech expo segment, we're going to talk about IPsec aggregate, a feature that was made available in 40 OS 6.2 and enhanced in 40 OS 6.4. IPsec aggregate has become an incredibly important and valuable feature when deploying services across the hybrid cloud, where the infrastructure footprint may span multiple dynamic edges. In such scenarios, connecting these platforms with scalable, reliable connectivity is massively important. Customers are moving to diversify infrastructure consumption to better enable business outcomes. The central business view on this is agility. A secure and highly performing network remains significant to realizing these outcomes. Connectivity is a key part of bringing multiple edges into alignment, both on the value realization, which is ultimately usability of these infrastructure platforms, and security context. Connectivity has been a challenge with these dynamic edges. Deploying dedicated circuits is expensive, and scaling performance to rate-limited cloud-native services has previously made VPN scaling difficult. Highly distributed enterprises are also driving toward SD-WAN. Let's review a typical VPN deployment from an enterprise property to a public cloud. Following that, we'll review the benefits of IPsec aggregate. This diagram depicts what you might see from a basic deployment from an enterprise environment, possibly a data center or branch, to a VPN gateway in public cloud. Immediately, we see some of the limitations, such as the ability to scale VPN throughput is limited to less than 2 gigabits per second. While this tunnel is set up as a redundant link, the ability to scale bandwidth here is also limited. Any attempt to scale the VPN using ECMP creates additional complexities. Furthermore, routing options are limited. Only static or basic BGP routing is possible. Options such as path attributes, filtering, and redistribution are not available from cloud-based VP gateways. Additionally, you have to consider the cost that can be incurred from trying to scale up VPNs. The more VPNs you add from more remote sites, there's cost per VPN tunnel, and uh, there are different cost incurred based on the, the type of VPN, whether it's a basic VPN or premium VPN that you might employ. So what does it look like if we use FortiGate? We see that we can solve a few things right away. FortiGate applies security at the VPN. Remote sites can employ SD-WAN to terminate to a FortiGate head end, and there's no specific rate limit. Typically, we see on a per VPN basis for a single phase one tunnel around about two gigabits per second. Depending on the platform and the instance type and the version of 40OS, that may vary a bit. But the point is, it's not CPU bound. The other opportunity is to directly connect these cloud-based FortiGates into a security fabric route. With IPsec aggregate, we can improve on this model significantly. Available in 6.2 and newer versions of 40OS, one can aggregate multiple phase one tunnels to scale up bandwidth. Now, this is going to be predicated on the number of CPU cores that you apply to a given system. Because these IPsec phase one tunnels must be distributed over multiple CPU cores, it gives us the opportunity to scale up to the size of the instance we may be running our FortiGate on and to deliver maximum value and cost optimize our deployment of FortiGate. Deploying IPsec is very simple. Adding tunnels and then adding those tunnels to a member interface can be done very quickly in the CLI or the user interface. The implementation is very simple relative to other technologies such as ECMP, eVPN or VXLAN, consider that each end of the IPsec aggregate tunnel only has to route a single interface or peer to a single IP address. So BGP routing becomes much easier to manage. High bandwidth applications can be supported. Customers may have dedicated circuits to a public cloud environment. IPsec aggregate can be used as a substantial backup, can be used as an SD-WAN diversified link, or as a replacement for those dedicated circuits wholesale. And it scales when you look at the distributed enterprise using IPsec aggregate over a large distributed enterprise environment with many, many branch locations is more cost effective and scalable than using and employing dedicated circuits. We can see the results of IPsec aggregate by looking at the 40 OS CLI outputs of Diag Sys MPSTAT output, which shows software queues are distributed evenly over all of our CPUs, in this case 16, and a similar example using eight CPU cores showing Diag VPN IPsec CPU spreading the encryption and decryption over multiple CPU cores here. From here, we can see what this configuration looks like in the 40 OS GUI. In the top part of the screen, we see that there's a master IPsec aggregate interface under which there are four member tunnels in this example. And those member tunnels 
can use a variety of algorithms, transport layer, IP addresses, a round robin distribution can be employed as well. And in the bottom part of the screen, we see the distribution of traffic over each of those tunnels, both in the ingress and egress directions. The bullets on the left summarize what we've talked about in terms of interconnectivity between different infrastructure footprints, including the data center and public cloud in our example. But also transit routing is a good use case between public cloud regions. Remember that on a per tunnel basis, VPNs will always be CPU bound. There is no MPU or SPU offloading here. And so IPsec aggregate gives us the ability to scale beyond the single CPU core. It has advantages over technologies such as ECMP and makes dynamic routing more useful. In IPsec, Aggregate allows you to logically group multiple site to site tunnels as a single inter interface. IPsec aggregate simplifies connectivity by removing the need for constructs such as ECMP or complicated routing. IPsec aggregate really differentiates Fortinet both from a native public cloud capability and from our competitors and really solves for enterprise connectivity across a hybrid cloud. For the next part of this virtual tech expo, let's look at a demo of IPsec aggregate. What we're going to highlight here is the IPsec aggregate. The whole point in IPsec aggregate, right, is really to help increase capacity of your IPsec performance from one site to another, because it's site to site. And what we want to do, though, is avoid complexity and problems. So ECMP routing, especially when you start dealing with dynamic routing and things like that, it gets very tedious, right? So with this, what we're doing is we still have IPsec tunnels. You're still defining phase one, phase two, all of the normal stuff. You're just telling the Fortigate to treat that as a member of a logical interface. So we have one tunnel here. We have another tunnel here going to a different remote gateway and so on, right? And if we actually look at this, we're using per packet load balancing right now, which is great to spread out load, but it's of course a more uh, performance hit. So uh, when you start really scaling your bandwidth to five or 10 or 15 gigs, you wanna move over to the L3 option, right? So fairly straightforward on that. And when you look at the actual routes, for example here, I am doing BGB pairing, but I only have one peer that I have to deal with, right? My gateway IP is just one next hop because that's all I'm dealing with. Logically, it's one interface, right? So it's simplified. Instead of me having four BGP peers now, I just have this one to troubleshoot and make sure it's good to go, right? And then so on the policy here, I let it super easy, right? Just like any other logical interface. So let's generate a little bit of traffic so that you guys can see the actual hashing of that traffic over here. So it's already kind of very even from previous tests, but if I generate some more traffic here, then we're going to see that continue to be the case. And per packet is great, uh, but once you start getting the four or five gigs, you want to move to L3 load balancing. And even with that, which we're going to showcase in a little bit, you can get very even usage, right? So if I refresh, you now we're seeing the ticker go up slowly but surely. There we go. So traffic hashing is, is very even on this setup. So to show the capabilities of you know really scaling a single site-to-site -site tunnel, let me actually pull up some other uh, resources here in, in another lab that we have still deployed in AWS. Uh, so what we have here is Fortitester, which is our traffic generator. And what we're going to have is it generates uh, HTTP workload. Basically, one single TCP connection has a single HTTP transaction, which is a GET. Of a 44 kilobyte file that then is downloaded. So it's, you know, typical web server connections per second test, right? And what we have here is our Fortigate. And what we're doing in this case is we are doing, well, actually, let me show you here. So we have a 36 core VM, and then we have 32 unique tunnels that are all tied to one aggregate interface, and it's doing L3 load balancing, right? So what we're going to do here is clear our policy counter. Let just make that a little bigger. And then we're good to go. So let's go to the dashboard and let's kick this guy off. So this, it takes a little bit to start, but at the end of the day, uh, Fortester is a great tool if you guys are looking to actually 
uh, performance test, you know, your own setup directly in AWS. So we see here our aggregate bandwidth is right around 16 gigs, 40,000 connections per second. So this is a, a pretty decent workload, right? And we can see that the Portigate, even though it's doing this encryption, this 36 core box is very even CPU utilization across the board, which is exactly what you want. What you can do when you use multiple tunnels specifically for decrypt, because decrypt based off of the way SR IOV works always hits a given C CPU because it hits a given interface queue. So it's very low level stuff for SRIOV, but essentially it's a hardware limitation that we cannot control. So, however, with IPsec aggregate, you can work around that to get, you know, 15 gigs worth of even more of IPsec, right? So if we go to the policy, look at our counters, there's absolutely no other policy here. So it's going through VPN, right? And if we look at the monitor, you can see our traffic is being hashed pretty evenly, right? Very evenly. So that's it. So that's the gist, right? IPsec aggregate isn't a replacement for SD-WAN. What IPsec aggregate specifically is for is for having a large scale site to site a connection and to be able to increase your capacity for IPsec while keeping your policy and your routing simple. So you can definitely leverage SD-WAN and you could even stack SD-WAN on top of IPsec aggregate, but really for this use case, we're just trying to show raw performance that you can get out of the IPsec ag interface on a VM, which doesn't have access to ASICs or anything like that.